Hello and welcome once again to our family workshop. And in this video, we are focusing on scroll saw bird projects. On these particular ones, we're starting to get a little bit more creative. We're using stack cutting as a method once more. We're using that Starbond super glue and the accelerant where we put four little dots of super glue in the corners of four different pieces of wood, stick them all together in preparation for doing your scroll saw ring. Now the five different birds that we are making in these projects, you've got the kingfisher, you've got the heron, you have the robin, the swan, and the barn owl. There's a bonus one that we will share with you at the end as well. This took inspiration from my son's school. Each and every one of their classes has a bird name. So I thought, what a fantastic theme for a scroll saw project. So the early part of this video is showing the preparation that we've done on all of the different projects. So you can see us cutting out the designs, sticking them onto the wood itself. From there, we drill all of our holes ready for doing the pierce work. One thing I mentioned with this one, I've had to drop the drill bit. I've had to pull it a little bit further down in the drill so it can cut through all four pieces of wood. When we need to do our scroll saw in, we've got to feed that blade in through the hole. So you have to drill a hole deep enough to get through all four pieces of wood. We sand the back of all of our projects because we want it to sit nice and flat on the scroll saw bed itself. The first scroll saw project we're focusing upon is the bird that features on the logo of the school, and that is the heron. So what we do to start this project, we cut a profile all around, but we're also cutting into separate parts. So the body, the legs, the head, the beak, they're all cut into separate pieces that will be used later on to almost create a jigsaw. But the reason we're doing it in this style is the four different colours of wood will give us contrast and interest in the finished products. Now from there, we're marking out to create a back for our projects. So we mark it all out on the woods. We then use our band saw because it is quicker when it comes to the cutting than the scroll saw. Cut that all out on the band saw and then we go across to our belt sander just to smooth everything off. So we round off that shape, just sanding it down to the line, taking the outside edge of the line off. We then use increasingly fine P grades of grit in order to get a nice smooth finish. Once we finish with the sanding, that's when it comes on to the fun part. Again, we're working with that Starbond super glue. Check out the description. There's a link in there you can use. Put in the discount code LOVESPOONS and you'll get a discount on anything you buy from Starbond. You put that bird together, back across to the belt sander to sand everything off nice and smooth. We also just do a little bit of hand carving. That's optional. We've done these projects with and without carving. You can just sand them flat and leave it like that. But what we've done is to add an extra element is to carve the different aspects. We're also creating a base. We're cutting out two little grooves on the base. This will be used to slide a back and a front into because this one is going to be a mini letter rack. So we have our heron at the front with a backing piece behind it. In between then, those letters can be put into the letter rack. Onto the finishing, we add three coats of shellac sanding sealer, rubbing it down in between each coat. We demonstrated all of our preparation at the start of the video. So we are going straight into our second project. As you can see, it is the Robin design. We have those four different colored pieces of wood stuck together and we proceed with cutting out the different parts of the design. There's a little bit of a combination of line art as well as cutting the different chunks out in separate parts. So that's the first part that we super glue onto the design is the log. So a little bit of accelerant on the back of that piece, a little bit of super glue on the backing board itself. We then put the feet on, breast, 
and the wings and the beak. We sand everything again, sand it nice and smooth on the belt sander and afterwards we use our hand carving skills to rough up the shape of the log and to give the body of the robin a nice rounded finish. A little bit of sanding as well to give it a more smooth finish on the robin itself. Now with this particular one, as we mentioned, it's a candle holder. So we make a base for our candle holder. We then use our cutter in our hand drill and this is used to cut out a recess that afterwards can be filled using a tea light candle. Another little part we don't often demonstrate is you can fill that gap using a little bit of felt. So you can get an adhesive back felt just to finish it off. And again, if you want to use that on the base, just refines the finished product a little bit. You can see he's working on the belt sander, smoothing everything off, taking off any sharp edges, taking off any teeth marks that have been left by our bandsaw. And you're sanding everything nice and smooth in preparation for the finishing. It's worth noting that we're sanding this one sideways. That's because that's the direction of the grain. Whenever you're working with the belt sander, it's important to always sand with the grain. Now we go on to putting the project together. So we use a little bit of super glue and accelerant again to stick the backing piece to the base itself. Three coats of shellac sanding sealer. Again, applying this in the direction of the grain, rubbing it down in between each coat, and then afterwards a final coat of beeswax mixed with linseed oil. This next project is slightly different to the other ones that we are demonstrating. It's a swan, but we are using the process of line art. That is where you can use lines, cutting them out on your scroll saw. So you drill that pilot hole and then use the pierce work to cut out lines on the scroll saw and create a rough outline, an image of the swan design. We then cut a basic outline. We put fridge magnets on the back. And again, we're adding three coats of shellac sanding sealer, applying that in the direction of the grain. Now our fourth project is similar to the first two that we've demonstrated, but this time we're working on a kingfisher. So we got those four contrasting colored pieces of wood once more, and we start cutting away the different parts, almost like cutting out a jigsaw. So we have the log again that the kingfisher is standing on, the wing, the beak, and the main body of the kingfisher. We use that starb on super glue once more, and we stick the different parts of the design. So again, we start off by sticking the log onto the backing boards. We then put the main body and the wing of the kingfisher and the beak over to the belt sander and we get all of the different woods, all of those different contrasting pieces of wood. We sand them so they're all at the same level. We also use a little bit of colored super glue. We're using that black super glue and it adds an extra bit of definition and character to the individual piece. On to using our hand carving skills. So shaping the bird and the log once more, rounding off the bird, taking off any excess super glue and giving the kingfisher a nice rounded and smoothed off finish. We then create a base. Again, we're using our coronet saw to cut a recess. And what we will do, we will super glue our backing piece into that base. Afterwards, we will add a little notepad in front and you've created a decorative notepad holder. You'll see us then adding three coats of shellac sanding sealer, rubbing it down in between each coat, applying that in the direction of the grain. Now the final project that we're working on, and there is a bonus one after this, but this is the final one of the five, and that is our barn owl. So those are the classes in my son's school. We have the school logo of the heron. You then have the robin, the barn owl, the swan, and the kingfisher. So again, we start off by doing any pierce work that is needed. So I've used pierce work to create the effect 
of feathers. We then start to separate the different parts away from one another. So we have the log that the barn owl is standing on, the feet that need to be cut away from the log and the body as well, the body itself, the wing, the face, the outside of the eyes, and we drill a hole on the inside of the eyes as well. Our Starbond super glue and accelerant is used. Just apply a little bit of super glue, decide the position, first of all, that you want the log in. We then put the main body of the owl, and then afterwards add all of the extra parts to the design. Again, using that belt sander to smooth every piece of wood down to the same level in the design. You'll also notice that we've used colored super glues in the eyes and the beak of our owl and that creates an additional color in the design. We hand carve everything just to get it all onto a nice finish. The log, we create that sort of rough effect for the finish. Once again, we're gonna turn this into a candle holder. We are marking out around the outside edge of our base. We then cut a hole that will be the recess that the tea light can be put into, onto the bandsaw to cut that profile out. And one extra part with this one, you'll notice there's a little notch cut out of the back of this particular base. The reason for that, it allows the log that the owl is sitting on to go into the base nice and evenly. Just makes it easier for us to make. The other way to do this would be to have the log higher up so it sits on top of the base. But in this example, that's what I did, is to cut a little notch out of the back of that piece. So after the owl on the log will slide into the base nice and evenly. We then sand everything off and we got to stick everything together. So we're using that Starbond super glue and the accelerant, push the backing piece into the base itself, making sure that that log fits into the recess that you've cut. We then onto that three coats of shellac sanding sealer, rubbing it down in between each coat before a finishing coat of linseed oil mixed with beeswax. That was a little bonus at the end here. We're gonna show you another project. This actually came about from a previous demonstration that we've given you, where we did the eagle swooping down, catching the fish in the water. But because you're cutting out more than one piece of wood at a time, you can make multiple projects. So for instance, if you are stack cutting with four pieces of wood, you then have four projects that you can put together afterwards. And you'll have all of those contrasting colored pieces of wood. So in this example, we have three contrasting pieces of wood, some alder, some mahogany, and some oak. So one of the projects, we have the body as mahogany, the tail and head as oak, and the claws and beak as alder. So that allows us to do three projects because we stacked three pieces of wood at the same time. The other projects, because we stacked four at the same time, it allowed us to make four different projects. Let us know in the comment section which one of those projects is your favorite. Which style do you plan on having a go at making yourself? If you're new here and you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell so you know when we upload another video. And as always, thank you again for watching.